Welcome guys, this is episode 10 and we continue where we stopped last time by improving the player controls and this time we're making the player turn left and right. To begin with we open our play scenes file and we scroll down to the update method because we want to move all the player related movement update calls, we want to move these calls into the player entity. This will help us keep the scenes update method clean and we can handle all the player related logic inside the player prefab. And then we go into our player prefab file and we added the update method. And this update method we need to pass it the current player input which we're calling is holding and basically it just means what we programmed last time. If you remember it means are we holding down the right side of the screen or the left side of the screen telling the game move left or move right. And because right now we're inside the player prefab we have to adjust the scope of these functions here and basically if before it was this.player.x now we're inside the player prefab so it's just this.x. And to prove to you that nothing actually changed, let's just refresh the browser window and you'll see that everything is controlling exactly the same way as it did in the last episode. All we did is we moved the, the function calls from the scenes update method and we moved it into the player prefabs update method. So now we need to think about the player's life cycle, right? So for example, if the player is dead, we don't want to update him anymore. The other thing we want to do every frame of the game is we want to save in which direction the player is currently facing, which is controlled by the player inputs. Next, we want to check if the player's current state is actually walking and only if he's in a walking state, we update the sprite direction and then we move the sprite. So let's create a new method called move sprite. And for now, we'll just move the code from the scenes update method and we copy paste it into this move sprite method. Now, I hope that you remember that our player prefab is extending the entity prefab. And when we look at our entity prefab file that we've created a couple episodes earlier, we see that this is where we created the update sprite direction method. And this method, even though it has a long name, it's actually quite simple. All it does is it checks the current direction of the entity and then rotates the sprite accordingly. So the set current direction method, it saves a string value for the current direction. However, the update sprite direction method, it rotates the sprite in the game and the move sprite method, it moves the sprite in the game. So let's scroll to the bottom of this file and create a new section for all the setters. And our first setter method is this set current direction method. We pass it the input string from the play scene, which can be either left, right or down. And if it's set to false, we always default to down. And if we now go back into our play scenes update method, here we pass this direction string to the player prefab. And now we can update the move sprite method to respect the player's current direction. So if he's moving down, we move down, left and right, we move him left or right. Moving down is very simple. We simply add the speed value to the player's Y value and then we refresh the player's sprite position. To move left, we reduce the player's X value by the current speed and to move right, we increase the player's X value by the current speed. And remember that the update method checks the player's current state. So if we want the player to move, we first need to change his state to walking. That's why we create a new subsection for the movement and we create two new methods, the start moving and stop moving methods. And we can use these methods to control the, the player's walking state and play the correct walking animation. And it is in the play scene where we create the player. So to 
properly start the player moving, we have to use the start moving method from now on, right after we created the player. So I have been talking a lot about states in this episode, but we didn't actually create a method yet to save the state for an entity. In a much earlier episode where we created the entity prefab, we already saved a list of states that all our entities could have. So now when we pass a key to the setState method, we first want to make sure that this key is actually part of this list. We use the JavaScript function has own property to check the key and make sure it's a valid key from the list of states. Next, we want to make sure that the state actually changed because if it's the same state like it was in the last frame, then we can stop here as well. Then before we set the new state, we reset all the states to false. Then we set the new state to true and we also save the current state as the last state to check in the next frame. The reset states method is very simple. We just take every property from the states object and we set it to false. And finally, we must not forget to give the player a speed value. We give him a base speed of two and we also set the current speed to two and the max speed will be six. And if we refresh the browser window now, we see that we have full control over the player by turning him left and right. Now, of course, the movement is very basic and the player can move outside of the screen. There's no collision, but we're going to fix all of this very soon. The last thing we want to address in this episode is the fact that right now the player can move outside of the screen on the bottom because the movement speed is always slightly faster than the camera speed. So we want to make sure that when the player reaches the center of the screen that the camera will always keep up with the player and it just feels much better to control the player this way. So first to calculate the center position we take the camera's scroll value in the game world and we add to it the half height of the camera screen. If the player reaches this center point or even goes further than this center point then we want to adjust the camera position so that the player is always centered on the screen. And we do that by taking the player's Y position and from this we reduce again half of the camera height. And now we can refresh the browser window one last time and we see that we have the exact same control scheme that we have in the finished version of Endless Cave. We have full control over going left and right by default and in an unstoppable way our player is always moving down and as soon as we reach the center point of the screen the camera locks onto the player and we make sure that we cannot run down outside of the screen. In the next episode we'll start creating walls for the cave and um, slowly slowly now the game is turning into something actually playable. I hope you liked today's episode. Please give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Also, if you want to support me in any way, please follow me on Twitter. And if you haven't yet, download the game from the Play Store and give the game a rating. That really helps a lot. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a great day. See you next time.